Hi, baby. Hello, Relius Knights. How you doing? I'm JJ, and this is Drawing Talk, where I talk about anything that interests or inspires me as an artist. So, when I watch something really good, it inspires me to write and to draw, and one such show is Doctor Who. Now, Doctor Who dates back to 1963, when the first Doctor, played by William Hartnell, crashed his TARDIS, which is an acronym for Time and Relative Dimension in Space, and the chameleon circuit broke and gave birth to the police call box that has been the primary icon of the show ever since. If this all sounds a bit confusing, don't worry. Doctor Who has a long-running continuity that can make new fans shy back at the massive undertaking of understanding everything this universe has to offer. But those willing to suspend reality to take a journey through space and time will find the trip well worth it. To date, there are 12 Doctors and 12 incarnations of the same man. Longtime fans know this is simple trivia, but those new to Doctor Who will find it odd and fascinating that he is the same character from 1963. Since then, 12 actors have portrayed the beloved Doctor after each subsequent regeneration. You see, the Doctor is a Time Lord from the planet Gallifrey. Time Lords are aliens, but they look very much human aside from having two hearts and the amazing ability to change their face and appearance after a bout with death. Essentially, they die and become a new man. Every Doctor is as different in persona and appearance as they are in word and wit. The first incarnation of the Doctor I knew was the fourth Doctor, played by Tom Baker. He was an eccentric man with a crazy puff of brown curls, a flowing scarf, and a long trench coat. I don't really remember much more than that. As I grew up, this Doctor was just a figment of my past and something I watched in passing but never grew to love. At the time, I understood nothing about the show and had no idea he was a Time Lord, and until I got back into the show in 2010, I thought that the TARDIS was just a phone booth. The original running of the show was cancelled in 1989 due to low ratings and went on hiatus for four years. The movie, which introduced the Eighth Doctor, was produced in 1996. After that, the Doctor was quiet until 2005. Russell T. Davies rebooted the series in 2005 and introduced the Ninth Doctor, played wonderfully by Christopher Eccleston. It followed the continuity of the original Doctor Who, but started with Season 1 instead of continuing the season numbers from the previous show. Back in 2005, I happened to stumble across an episode of The Ninth Doctor, which was World War III with the Slavine. All I remember is seeing some guy in a black leather jacket with short hair and a British accent fighting a fat, bug-eyed monster and eventually cutting to a commercial break, heralded by the Doctor Who logo and theme song. At first, I scoffed at this because I thought that they had just rebooted the series to try and cater to a younger, hipper demographic. Buzz cut, leather jacket, and all that, you know. The Doctor had puffy hair and a scarf. Who was this hip imposter? So I dismissed the show and never watched it again. Then, in 2009, I started following a web series called Hey Ash, Whatcha Playin? It's about a brother and sister creating parodies on video games. It made me laugh, Ash is adorable, and I instantly fell in love with the show, which eventually led me to their podcasts. During one such podcast, they mentioned their love for Doctor Who. At first, I didn't understand how they had such an undying love for an outdated series from the 60s. Then, in 2010, I happened upon BBC America one random afternoon. I was watching a rerun of Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares, and an episode of Doctor Who was up next. It was the final episode of Season 5, which is The Big Bang. I only caught the ending where River shoots the 11th Doctor's feds into oblivion. So, suffice to say, my first introduction to the new show was the ending of, at the time, the entire series. After it ended, the show restarted from Season 1, Episode 1, Rose, with the Ninth Doctor. The same Doctor I had stumbled upon years before. What caught my attention this time was the witty dialogue. The first exchange between the Doctor and Rose was amazing. Rose steps into a kind of basement in her department store and is attacked by mannequins. Just as she's about to be judo chopped to death, a hand grabs her by the wrist and a man in a black jacket pulls her aside and says, RUN. The dialogue in the elevator that follows is fantastic. The delivery, the snappy timing, the acting, and the character of the Ninth Doctor all had me mesmerized. That and I love Christopher Eccleston's facial expressions. The rest of the episode revolved around mannequins. They had fingers that broke open to reveal guns, and they came to life and broke through store windows to wreak havoc on London. Yeah. Oh, and they were plastic aliens controlled by something called the Nestine Consciousness. After that, I was hooked. I followed the show until his subsequent regeneration into the Tenth Doctor, played by David Tennant. The Tenth Doctor sealed my fate as a Whovian, and oh my gosh, the end of time was so good. I know some fans hated it, but to me it was freaking brilliant. When he finally regenerated into the Eleventh Doctor, I cried. Seriously. The farewell was probably one of the most epic things I've witnessed in television ever. As for the Eleventh Doctor, well, it's at this point that the series lost steam for me. The end of the Tenth Doctor was also a farewell to Russell T. Davies. He stepped down from the show and another writer, Stephen Moffat, took over. Doctor Who just wasn't the same after that. I feel like its charm had gone 
gone due to the new style of the show. So I have to admit that I wasn't a fan of season 5. However, season 6 was better, but the whole astronaut thing kind of fell flat to me, but I really enjoyed season 7. It felt like a return to form and every episode had me captivated like I hadn't been two seasons. My love was back. The name of the Doctor was a wonderful setup to the 50th anniversary and the 11th Doctor's inevitable regeneration. Despite having some issues with the 50th anniversary, I really enjoyed the reunion and was genuinely upset when Matt Smith stepped down. Then, right before I was about to start crying, he flashed into Peter Capaldi. It happened too quickly. I watched the first two episodes of the 12th Doctor season and lost interest. I lost touch with Doctor Who after that simply because life gets complicated and when there are too many games and other shows to keep up with. I eventually returned to the show I think around the time that season 9 was still playing on Netflix. I wasn't a fan of season 8's first episode Deep Breath and the second episode Into the Dalek was so-so. However, Robot of Sherwood, Listen, Time Heist, The Caretaker, which is one of my particular favorites, Kill the Moon, Mummy on the Orient Express, and Flatline were amazing. And then that's as far as I got. When I was about to catch up on Peter Capaldi's season, Netflix got rid of Doctor Who. And I drew this picture in mourning. Rel Rel was upset about the whole thing too. So anyways, I plan to catch up on Doctor Who when I have time because I'm finally getting back into it, but that'll have to wait till later. Well, I'll end this there. I hope you enjoyed this short introduction to Doctor Who and the universe as well as how I became a Whovian. Anyway, so are you a fan of Doctor Who? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I'm JJ. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and do share this video with your friends. I will be back with another Drawing Talk soon. Please take care. You rock. Bye. That's cool.